Welcome to the SimCode ACLS tutorial series. For those of you new to this series, we will be going over various advanced cardiovascular life support resuscitation scenarios, categorized by heart rhythm. These scenarios will be run on SimCode ACLS, the best real-time web-based ACL simulator. After watching the video, you should have a better idea of how to approach the particular scenario and how to optimize the delegation of actions to your team members. In this video, we will go through some of the basics of working through a case of asystole. We will be running this case in the advanced training mode, which means we will have to monitor our assistance performance, such as CPR quality, in addition to what's going on with the patient. Remember that asystole means that there is a lack of electrical activity in the heart, and because of that, the patient will not have a pulse. Here, you can see asystole listed in the pulseless rhythm column. We'll go ahead and click on it to generate a case. Remember that in SimCode ACLS, each case is unique and unscripted. Therefore, we will have to approach it as such. The beginning of a scenario is critical, and a lot of things will happen quickly. While protocols are written in a flowchart manner, to maximize efficiency, there are things that can be done in parallel. First thing we have to do after we arrive at the scene is assess the patient to figure out what is going on. I'll click on the Assess button here to start the process of assessing the patient. Meanwhile, I'll hover the mouse over one of the expected pulse locations to see if there is a pulse. Now, I don't see a pulse here in the pulse meter, so we'll need to start chest compressions immediately. I'll also have an assistant start oxygen support with a bag mask. While he's doing that, let's make sure the compressions are performed at the correct rate and depth. Okay, let's get somebody else to start an IV. We'll also get this person to attach a defibrillator and this person to attach the pulse oximeter. It's a bit crowded in here, so I'll make a couple of people leave the room. This person is finished with the defibrillator, so I'll have him start attaching a blood pressure cuff. Let's stop compressions and see what rhythm the patient is in. It looks like asystole, so let's restart compressions. Since the patient is in asystole, we need to give medications, but we don't have any IV access established yet. We'll have to wait a bit, but let's reposition some people to make transitions faster later on. It looks like the assistant couldn't get the IV in. Let's have him try again. I also have another assistant try at the same time. Note that earlier on, after starting oxygen, I reassessed the patient to make sure there were breath sounds in both lungs. This is important because a lack of breath sounds in one or both lungs may need to be addressed and can also help you figure out the cause of a system. Great, we've obtained IV access. Now we can give the first medication, one milligram of epinephrine. Once that goes in, we should continue chest compressions for about two minutes before reevaluating the patient. Now we know what rhythm we're dealing with and can administer medications, we can draw some labs to help us learn more about the patient's condition. As the scenario evolves, we should be searching for possible contributing factors that can be treated. Also note that in the event there is no IV or IL access, but there is an endotracheal tube in place, certain medications can be administered through the ET tube. It looks like he wasn't able to draw a blood sample. Let's try it again. If I hover the mouse over a pulse point and chest compressions are being done properly, we may be able to feel a pulse in the pulse meter. Still no luck with the lab draw. Let's have somebody else try. It sounds like the bag mask is being squeezed a bit fast. Let's check the rate. Sounds like it's being squeezed once every 4 seconds, which is about 15 times per minute. That's too fast, so let's slow it down to about 1 every 6 seconds, which is about 10 times per minute. Great, the blood sample was successfully drawn and sent to the lab. Now we need to keep doing CPR until the next pulse check. By the way, if we need to review what has happened, we can see that on the event log here. Let's fast forward about 45 seconds. We've been doing chest compressions to help circulate the medications. Now it's about time to do a pulse check, so we'll stop compressions and then mouse over a pulse point to check for a pulse. No pulse was detected, and it still looks like asystole, so we'll start up compressions using a fresh new person. It sounds like the new compressor is going too fast, which doesn't allow for proper recoil. So we'll adjust that, and also adjust the compression depth to fall within 1.5 to 2 inches. 
Then we'll have somebody prepare and give one milligram of atropine. Since proper chest compressions are important for maintaining perfusion and circulating medications, it is important that we keep an eye on compression quality and keep breaks, such as pulse checks, as short as possible and to a minimum. Here you can see that the labs we drew earlier are still in process. In a real-life scenario, it would probably take even longer to get lab results back, but then there may also be previous labs that could be reviewed as well. Just to demonstrate IV infusions, I'll start a 1 liter bolus of normal saline. When it is set up, you'll be able to see its progress on the IV pump here. If you need to review the ACLS algorithm, you can click on the algorithm button on the taskbar. The first screen shows basic life support procedures. The second screen shows rhythms separated into categories. You can click on a category button to see the protocols for that particular rhythm. Here we can see the protocols for asystole and PEA. You can hover over some of the boxes to get further information. Keep in mind that the scenario is still running while you review the protocols, just as in real life. With enough regular practice, you'll be able to remember the protocols without any problem. Let's continue chest compressions and fast forward about 30 seconds. If you have trouble clicking on an assistant, you can also use the assistant selection buttons here. The middle button shows a list of all the assistants on screen by name. Click on a name to select that person. You can also cycle through the assistants using the previous and next buttons. It sounds like the compressor is getting tired and slowing down. It's also about time for a pulse check, so we'll stop compressions and check for a pulse. Still no pulse and still looks like a systole. Let's resume compressions using another assistant. We'll also have one of them prepare and give the next dose of 1 milligram of epinephrine. The compression rate sounds about right, but the depth looks shallow. We'll go ahead and fix that. Again, we'll need to continue compressions for about two minutes to circulate the medications and give them a chance to work. Let's fast forward about a minute and 40 seconds. It sounds like the compressions are getting slower, and it's also about time for a pulse check, so we'll stop compressions and check for a pulse. Still no pulse and still looks like a systole. Let's resume compressions using another assistant. Then we'll have this person prepare and give another 1 milligram of atropine. It looks like the compressions are going too slowly, so let's check and fix that. Note that while assistants will move to the necessary location to perform tasks, you can move them to different parts of the screen by selecting them and then clicking on an open location. You can use this to help organize the room and to optimize performance times, such as changing compressors. It looks like there's a change on the ECG monitor, but we can't rely on it while chest compressions are being performed. Since we just did a pulse check recently and gave atropine, let's continue chest compressions for about two minutes before re-evaluating the rhythm. If we stop chest compressions every time we thought we saw a change on the ECG during chest compressions, our compression fraction would be quite low and the patient would lose valuable perfusion. All right, let's fast forward another minute and 40 seconds or so. It looks like the compressor is getting tired, but it's time for a pulse check anyway. I detect a pulse and it looks like sinus rhythm on the monitor, which is great. Let's check a blood pressure as well. The case ends automatically when the simulator detects that the patient is stable or deceased. The case debriefing here shows a list of metrics recorded during the simulation and corresponding grades to help you see what you did well on and what you could do better. The case overview shows what rhythms the patient went through and what you could have done, as well as feedback on the medications you gave. By clicking on the View Tracing button, you can review the compression and ECG tracings during the case. In the Navigator bar, there's a Navigator window you can slide around to help scroll through the case. You can also resize the time scale by changing the width of the Navigator window. This is helpful for seeing how long the compressions were stopped during the case and whether they were performed well or not. That's it for this case. Remember, even though we may have successfully resuscitated this patient, we should always look for ways in which we can improve our performance. For example, reducing the amount of pulseless time that passes without compressions being performed. Now that you have seen a case of resuscitating a patient in asystole, it's time to practice what you've learned. This will help ensure that you will be able to do your best regardless of how long ago you watched this video or how much stress you may be under when you need to perform. You can easily practice your ACLS skills at www.simcodeacls.com. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos and updates to SimCode ACLS.